Some of you have said that bass is the soul of music and movies. Some of you may think differently, but I tend to agree that it is the soul. Because, without it, music and movies just doesn't have that same life and excitement that I've grown to love. That being said, not all of us are in the position to have lots and lots of bass. Maybe you live in an apartment or a condo, or you have small children that are sleeping, or maybe your wife just hates bass. Whatever your reason is, you just can't turn it up to shake you and your chair as much as you would like. Well, I'm here to tell you today that that very well may be a problem of the past. Why might this be a problem of the past? Well, the device that we're going to be talking about today provides you with extremely powerful, soul-shaking, silent bass. I'm Barrett, this is Speck Tech, welcome to the channel. The device we're going to be talking about today is called an actuator or a bass actuator. Some people have come to know them as bass shakers, but this device actually operates a little bit differently and it provides a much more accurate response. Some of you may already be aware of the company called Croson Technology that makes these actuators, but for those that aren't, here's a quick rundown. Croson actuators are generally accepted to be the cream of the crop and the best choice for a base actuator for your seat because they do provide the most accurate response, but there are many other options at other price points that are more budget friendly, like butt kickers, Oro Sound, as well as Dayton Audio, which I've dropped links down below to provide you guys with some other options besides the Croson's, but we will be discussing the Croson specifically today. But please do keep in mind that in my opinion, the Croson's are the most accurate, best choice for bass actuators, but there is a big price difference between them and what you would call a bass shaker, so I did want to provide those other options. And for those of you that may already be using bass shakers or the Croson actuators, please do drop your comments down below. I really want to know what you think as well. Okay, before we get into the video, I just want to quickly point out that I did purchase these Croson actuators with my own money, so nobody had any influence or any say whatsoever on this video. This will be my opinion and my opinion alone. That being said, buying all this equipment for my home theater and for review can get awfully pricey, so for those of you that may want to help the cause, consider joining my Patreon. I've dropped the link down in the description below. Alright, so moving right along, the Croson kit that we are discussing today is the Level 2 Motion System. There are other options on the website, which I've linked down in the description below. The Level 2 system consists of the D501 amplifier as well as two Shadow 8 actuators and two motion isolation feet. I did have to buy more feet for my seats, but we'll discuss that a little bit later in the installation part of this video. The Level 2 kit retails for $1,836 US dollars, but as I previously mentioned, there are other options, so feel free to check those out at the Croson website. But throughout this video, I will be explaining to you why these things are worth their price tag, so make sure you stay tuned on this video. We're going to get to the specs in just one second, but before we do, real quick, I would greatly appreciate your help getting me to 10,000 subscribers, so please consider subscribing, tick the bell icon if you do, and please take just one second out of your day to click the like button, I really do appreciate it. Alright, so let's cover some of the basic specs of the Croson actuators. For all the rack mount guys out there, the amplifier is 1U and it is rack mountable with the removable ears that are included in the package. It is 17 inches wide and 10.4 inches deep or 11.2 inches deep including the speaker connections and it weighs in at 20 pounds. The amplifier can provide 500 watts RMS and 700 watts peak and it can power up to four Shadow 8 actuators at one time, but please don't pay too much mind to the wattage here guys. This is a completely different device than a subwoofer, but trust me, 500 watts RMS is plenty for these devices. A little bit later in the video we are going to discuss how to wire the amplifier to the actuators, so make sure you guys stay tuned on the video, but let's continue on with the specs. The front of the amplifier consists of the Croson logo plate, a power button, a mode button which switches between music mode and movie mode. Both modes have a flat response, but the movie mode has a 6 dB increase over the music mode. There are blue LED lights above each button to indicate the status. Then we have the intensity level display, which goes from 0 to 32, and will indicate your level of intensity, which can be changed with the included remote or the dial to the right. The number lights up in red, but only for a short time while you are adjusting it. Then it turns off after a few seconds. Moving on to the rear of the amplifier, on the far left you do have the RCA Audio LFE inputs. Moving right from there is the crossover dial with adjustability from 40 to 160 hertz. Beside that is the 0 or 180 degree phase switch, then a power mode switch with your choice of on, auto, or trigger. I did find that the auto function does work quite well and shuts off after about 15 minutes. Continuing to the right, you have your single trigger input and IR control input. Beside those are the two sets of five-way binding posts. And on the far right, you have a voltage selector, a power switch, and an IEC power cable port. The included remote is a small credit card style remote with a metal face. It can turn the unit on and off. It can adjust the intensity, mute the actuators, and switch between music and movie mode. So that completes our tour of the amp and the remote. Let's move on to the Shadow 8 actuators. Each actuator is 5.7 inches long, 4.8 inches wide, 1.1 inches high, and weigh in at 3.5 pounds each. 
The weight limit is 250 pounds per actuator and that includes the isolation feet. So between the two feet and the two actuators, you have a weight limit of 1,000 pounds. So there's not much to worry about in that regard. The actuators are eight ohms and they have a mind boggling flat response from one hertz to 600 hertz. The top plate is stainless steel with a grip tape on top, which means your chair is gonna stay put right where you leave it. These actuators are very well built. They feel like a solid chunk of metal. And of course they should be because you are gonna be putting a chair on top of them. But I was quite surprised when I picked them up. Although they're only three and a half pounds, it does feel like quite a bit considering their size and they do have a nice heft to them. All right, so that's all of the specs that we're gonna to cover today. If you guys do want more specs, feel free to check them out on the Croson website. So I wanna take a second here to discuss the build quality and Croson technology as a company. When the package arrived, everything was packaged extremely well. Everything came in its own soft touch drawstring bag. Then you get your hands on the actual units and everything feels incredibly robust from the amplifier to the actuators. Everything seems extremely well built and has a nice heft to each of the units. Throughout my buying experience, I actually had the pleasure of speaking with Randolph Croson who is the founder of Croson Technology LLC. Randolph had a wealth of knowledge when discussing these products and he's just all around pleasant to deal with. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because I had the pleasure of learning why these units are truly second to none. Randolph explained to me that the majority of their business is building units for laboratory grade vibration testing. So the reason their units are so incredibly accurate and powerful is to suit the demanding needs of laboratories conducting precise and intricate testing. Randolph continued to explain that the reason that he provides these to the home theater community is it's because it's something he's personally passionate about. This conversation really shed some light on why the Croson actuators demand a higher price tag and why their performance is so extraordinary and authentic. And speaking of performance, I'm excited to explain to you guys my experience with these amazing little devices so far. For those that follow the channel, you probably know that I had the Harbottle Audio C24L2 subwoofer directly behind my listening position, and we're talking about a high performance 24 inch, 4400 watt RMS and 10,400 watt peak subwoofer about a foot and a half away from my listening position. And that subwoofer provided some amazing tactile response to my seat. We're talking about powerful, powerful bass down to the hertz in the single digits. That being said, the Harbottle Audio C24 subwoofer is 9,000 US dollars. And guys, this is not not me bragging in any way shape or form it's more so to put things into context with the cross and actuators i've since moved the harbottle audio subwoofer to the front stage while i await my legacy audio speakers it accompanies the funk audio 24.0e that recently arrived so make sure you guys stay tuned on the channel for a review of that subwoofer between the two of them i am getting plenty of audible bass but with having them both up front, I'm not getting anything near the tactile response that I was getting when I had the Harbottle sub directly behind my seat. My original plan was to get two more Funk Audio 24E subwoofers and they would go behind my main listening position, but at a farther distance, which would help with tactile response as well as smoothening out the response around my room. But I'm starting to second guess that plan after installing the Croson actuators. The Croson actuators provide me with some amazingly accurate and some incredibly authentic feeling tactile response base that is similar to having a powerful 24 inch subwoofer directly behind my chair. The Croson actuators don't feel like a bass shaker or like just vibration in my opinion. It feels like a powerful silent subwoofer directly behind your seat. First of all, the Harbottle Audio subwoofer did provide some amazing tactile response being right behind my seat. But during some of the dynamic scenes of bass, uh, it was hard on the ears. It would pressurize your ears a little bit too much because it was so close. While the Croson's don't have that problem, you are getting the exact same tactile response experience, but it's silent, so I am saving my ears. Secondly, if you are looking for an authentic feeling tactile response uh, for your chairs and you are thinking of grabbing either one or two more subwoofers to accomplish that, you could actually save yourself money by going with the actuators uh, from Croson, which would provide you a very similar tactile response if you already have good audible bass in your room at much less of a cost. Of course, that would depend on what subwoofers you are looking at uh, because the Croson's are priced at around 1800 US dollars. But for the most part, if you are looking for an extreme tactile response, you are gonna be looking at subwoofers that are substantially more than $1,800 for a pair of them or even for a single. So for me personally, if I do decide not to go with two more 24 inch Funk Audio subwoofers because of these Croson's, I will be saving myself quite a bit of money. And lastly, of course, if you don't go with two more large subwoofers for that tactile response, 
behind your seating. There's a huge space savings there. These actuators are very small and they just go under your seat. So they don't really take up much space. And even the amplifier is quite small and thin in and of itself. So it doesn't take up much space either. So there's a huge space savings with going with these Croson's versus two more or even one more subwoofer. But guys, these Croson actuators really are that good. The sensation is very authentic. It doesn't feel like something is just shaking your seat. It truly does feel like it is the waves or the bass waves from a subwoofer shaking your chair. Uh, it's very authentic. And of course, if you wanted more adjustments besides what's on the amplifier, you could just get yourself a mini DSP, which would provide you further um, customization in the response of the bass actuators because essentially they are reproducing a bass frequency. So you can adjust that frequency to however you wish using a mini DSP. All right, guys, that's enough blabbing from me. I know that there's those of you out there patiently waiting for some demos. So let's get into some demos. And then after that, we'll discuss the installation of the actuators real quick. Please do keep in mind that everything else is turned off except for the actuators. So you might pick up a little bit of the vibration of the chair on the microphone. But of course, if everything else was turned on, there's no way you would hear that slight vibration because it isn't very noisy. It just sounds like it might be a little bit noisy because the rest of my room is dead silent. I will do my best to capture the Croson experience on camera, but to do so, I will have to turn them up more than I normally would. Normally, I have the intensity set at 23 with the crossover turned to about 80 to 100 hertz. Uh, but for this demo, I am going to be cranking up the intensity just so I can help uh, show you guys visually what they are doing. And for those that are wondering, I did leave the Croson amp in movie mode for all of the demos. All right, so to capture the vibration, I used my delicious cognac and cranberry drink. For those of you that do like cognac, you definitely have to try it with cranberry juice. All right, let's get into the first demo. So of course we can't do a demo without going with the Edge of Tomorrow opening scene. So here we go. All right, so here's the second demo, which is a song called Gentlemen by J2X and Lou. It has more of a thumpy bass, which the Croson's actually handle very well also. Alright, so moving on to the next demo here, we have Kill Shot by Eminem. And the last demo we're going to do is a Atmos demo called Amaze, and we're just going to skip to the bass heavy scene, of course. All right, guys, now that we're done with the demos, uh, it's actually difficult to visualize or show you guys visually what the chair is experiencing or what you would experience sitting in the chair with the Croson actuators. Uh, but rest assured, these actuators do provide you with as much or as little authentic feeling motion uh, that you could ever want. It's not about shaking the chair violently to the point where things are going to start falling apart eventually. It's about giving you authentic tactile response um, and giving you as much or as little as you would want. All right, so I know that there's some of you out there that are wondering how to install them, so let's cover that real quick. The Croson actuators are very simple to install, but of course it does matter how many seats you have and how many feet your seats have. And for me personally, guys, I do have four Valencia Tuscany seats, and can we take just one moment to appreciate how beautiful these chairs are? I just got them not that long ago, and I'm still impressed every time I come downstairs and see them. I just 
appreciate how beautiful these chairs are. And if you guys are interested in new home theater seating, please do consider Valencia. I'll drop links down in the description below. The Croson actuators install on them very easily as well uh, because of the way their feet are designed. So it's really simple to install the Crosons on these chairs. All right, so now that I'm done admiring the chairs, I did get two actuators for my row of four, but that's because nobody in my household really cares how much base they get or how much tactile response they get. So the two actuators that I got, I put directly under my left armrest and my right armrest for the chair that I typically sit in. Um, so I did want to point out that the chair directly right to me does also get some tactile response and the chair directly left, of course, also does get some tactile response. But uh, the fourth chair, which is kind of two chairs over from me, it doesn't really get much of anything, guys. You can feel maybe a slight vibration, but that's because of the way the chairs connect. So if you do have similar chairs to the Valencia's that just use like a ratcheting mechanism and a post uh, that kind of just clicks in to prevent them from sliding apart, um, Keep that in mind, you are gonna want at least one actuator per seat if you want a smooth response across them. Okay, so how do you install them? Well, the first thing you're gonna need is feet for your chairs that are exactly one inch. So if your chairs already have one inch feet on them, nothing to worry about here. You can just remove two of the feet or remove however many feet you need to put the actuators under the chairs and you're set. But in my case, my feet weren't quite one inch tall, so I did have to buy one inch feet, which I will drop links down in the description um, for these feet. But the uh, Croson website does actually have two options as well. One I believe is about $10 per foot and it's just a rubber foot. And then the other option is a sorbethane foot or zorbethane, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but it has a bit of a soft material in between. Um, two of these feet were provided in my kit. So what it does is if you did um, outfit your entire seats with these feet, it provides a little bit of movement to the seating so that the actuator's uh, motion can transfer better to the seats. And it also prevents a little bit of the motion from transferring to the floor itself. So it is a better option, but they are 29 bucks a piece. So I opted for a different route. So of course there are some other DIY ways that you could get your chairs one inch off of the ground. Another option would be to connect your seating to say some like wooden rails and then put the feet on the bottom of those and the actuators on the wooden rails, which actually isn't a bad idea for the Valencia seating because they don't attach. Uh, you could get away with maybe using less actuators if the chairs were actually attached uh, with wood. But however you wanna do it guys, you just need to get your chairs one inch off of the ground to accommodate the actuators uh, going underneath your seating. So wherever you are gonna be placing the actuator, you just wanna remove the foot that is in that spot. So for me in particular, uh, there was two feet at the back of my armrest. So I just took those two feet off and put the actuators under there instead. So one thing to note for those of you that may be installing these on Valencia seating, please keep in mind that at least with my chairs in particular, the Tuscanese, the bolt that's used to bolt the feet into the metal frame itself, uh, not talking about the feet that screw into the armrest because the armrest is just used a wood screw, but the four feet under the chair itself, the bolt is uh, a weird thread that I wasn't able to find anywhere. So what I ended up doing is just getting a little bit narrower of a bolt that I could just push through that didn't need to thread in. And then I just use a washer and a nut on the other side to tighten it up. All right guys, so now that you have your chairs one inch off of the ground and you have your actuators placed wherever you want them underneath your seating, you need to get the LFE signal from your AVR or the processor to the amplifier. So of course you just use your subwoofer out on the back and you run an RCA cable to the back of the amplifier and plug it into the LFE port. Uh, and then you wanna hook up the actuators to the amplifier itself. You can just use normal speaker cables to hook up the actuators to the amplifier. So you have a negative and a positive and you have two sets of binding posts on the back of the amplifier. Uh, for two of your actuators. So if you do want to hook up more than two actuators, you can hook up either one, two, three, or four to this amplifier. Here are some wiring diagrams if you do want to hook up uh, four actuators. And then if you want to hook up three, you could just minus this one actuator. And if you want to hook up two, you just take away this actuator. And of course, if you just want to hook up one, you just run one set of cables from the amplifier to the actuator that you have installed. Here are some more helpful diagrams for those of you that may be wondering where to place the actuators if you have a single seat, or even if you have multiple seating, these diagrams should be helpful for you. If you guys do have more questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below, or of course you could always go to the Croson website and use the contact us option. All right, now that we've covered all those other details, it's time for my final thoughts. There's no other way to put this guys, the build quality and the performance of these little actuators have impressed me. To be honest guys, I was not expecting the tactile response from these actuators to be this authentic. Like I've said before, it truly does feel like you have a powerful subwoofer right behind you that's silent. 
So I will definitely be keeping these Croson actuators in my system. I'm extremely happy with them so far, and I'm very happy that I decided to spend the extra money and get the Croson actuators over something else. I believe that Randolph Croson has made something very special here for the home theater community, and he has made a fan out of me. Please consider subscribing, tick the bell icon if you do. Please take just one second out of your day to click that like button. I really do appreciate it. Remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.